So hello everyone, this is Ashwini with you from Go Campus. A very warm welcome to all of you. Now Go Campus is proud and happy to announce our new segment. But I know I think there are many doctors who've uh, joined this webinar or uh, who've come to Go Campus for the first time. So just um, to uh, just to make you all understand what we do now, Go Campus assists doctors for higher training in India, UK, USA, and now on demand we are launching our australia consulting pathway which is called as postgraduate consulting program for standard pathway now go campus in collaboration with dr kp balan brings to you an all-inclusive amc consulting package so a very warm welcome to you dr bala and thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here so dr bala is joining us from australia Thank you, Asha. Um, if you guys have any trouble, just do let me know and I can adjust it accordingly. And if you can hear me properly as well. So medical pathways in Australia. So as you guys know, Australia is very big and that's the map of Australia. And you have um, the West Coast, the East Coast, and then you have the couple of states in between. And I know a lot of you guys out there, when you're looking into Australia, you hear about Victoria, Melbourne, Sydney, sometimes Perth, um, but not a lot of you guys hear about South Australia or the Northern Territory, the Queensland. But as an IMG, the Queensland area gets is quite important, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So moving on to why Australia? Because you have a lot of options. You can work in India, you can go to um, US, UK, anywhere in the world, practically. You just have to do the exam, I guess. So why Australia? Well, it's a good work-life balance. So. Um, I have one kid, I have a husband, I have a family. At the same time, I work two jobs. Um, but Australia gives me the provision to do all of this because of the, um, you know, they try to maintain that you have a work, which is me going to the hospital. And then there's a certain amount of time that you have at home, which allows me to do what I love, which is teach. Then they do have good pay. Um, doctors do get paid very well. I'll be talking about the salaries, the average salaries that doctors do get and the specialty wise as well. Good hours. So you average about 80 hours. That's a full time job um, every two weeks. Um, so fortnightly, you, uh, you're you requested to work about 80 hours. You can go up to 100. But again, that's very rare. And you do get your days off. So again, good work life balance. And you have access to wide range of fellowships. So I do talk about a bit of what all is out there and what combinations you can do as a general practitioner. You can work, you can do a bit of surgery, dermatology, psychiatry, if that is your passion. Um, and also if you're an anesthetist or a cardiologist, if you want to have a special niche, like an area of interest, that's also possible. Then currently jobs are available. We are currently short staffed due to the pandemic and we do get a lot of doctors from Ireland, UK um, to the competent pathway, um, but they also, a lot of doctors do go back to their home country um, as they currently don't need any exams. So we do have, and then as in Australia itself, due to the pandemic and due to a lot of uh, immigration and all of that, we, this patient to doctor ratio is quite, we do fall sh quite short. So currently lots and lots of jobs available if you're looking to migrate. So, and also variety and specialization. So we'll talk about that in a bit. So let's talk about how we all start the entire process. As I saw the poll that a lot of you guys are thinking about Australia. So you guys should know also the process in getting registered here in Australia. So first and foremost, um, your college that you have done your medicine, um, or your say, I saw someone someone that's done an MD in anesthesiology. The college that you have done your degree in should be recognized by AMC, and you can find this on their uh, website. And at the end of the slideshow, I've also put links that you can click on to to find if your uh, college is recognized. And also the World Directory of Medical Schools. So this is another registry that you must have your college recognized in these two uh, areas. If not, you cannot sit for the AMC or get registered here in Australia. Okay. Once that is all done, and then you register through the AMC portal, you get an AMC ID. Then you have to do a primary source verification. This is where Ashwini and her group will be helping you guys with if you are deciding to take a services. After that, you roll enroll with Epic and you have to do a third party verification. Um, it's an 
uh, for the ECFMG. Again, it's all very stepwise. You do have to do payments in between, but I have put the uh, total payments that you do have to make um, when you are going for such a course or getting registered here in Australia. So once you've finished all the process of registering, so once you've opened up an AMC portal, you've got your primary verification sorted through AMC, then you've done your third party verification through the Epic, um, which is a third party again. Now that's also where you have to be sure, uh, make sure that you are in the area that you've done your medical degree because you do have the uh, attestation for a couple of your original documents to be sent. And they're, um, and they're, Office is in Philadelphia, so you do have to career it and then they send it back to you. Okay. Once all the registration and everything is done, you sit for the exams, and we'll talk about the exams in a little bit. And after that, you are eligible for three types of registration, which is your limited, provisional, and the general. We'll talk about the specialist pathway a little later, and that is completely a different pathway. So for Candidates who are sitting for the ANC exams and who are eligible for the ANC exams are going to be going to limited provision of the general registration. Okay, we'll talk about the registrations in a bit. Now, what's the fees? So there's been a recent fees change um, in the exams and we're going to talk about so like uh, we've mentioned before, AMC exams are part one is the MCQ and part two is the clinical. So initially, so these are the current um, price changes. I thought just let you guys know because you should, guys should be aware. And once you've done your registration, you've paid a certain amount. I don't want you guys to, and you have to be completely committed to getting registered in a country when you're going forth. So this is the um, assessment pathway. So they have slightly increased the value. So AMC portfolio, when you create it, $600. And again, and that's the additional qualifications that you're adding. So if you're just after MBBS, you don't have to pay that. Then you go to the MCQ examination when you get the results. And then when you are canceling an exam, you only get 50% of your refund. You don't get the full amount if it's if once you have registered for an exam date. So be very sure when you want to take your exam. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Apart from that, you go for your clinical exams. Um, clinical exams are done, so MCQ exams are done online. Um, clinical exams are done um, in face-to-face -face, um, in Melbourne, and you can also do it online. Now for the MCQ exam, there are specific test centers that you have to go to for the online exam. Um, for the clinical, you generally have to be in Australia to do the online exam, all right? And then we'll talk about the work-based assessment, which is something that is new and not really offered in other countries. So we'll talk about that in a bit as well. And I know a lot of you guys have questions about that. So once everything is done, you have completed your, say, part one and part two exams, you are eligible for the AMC certificate. Once you've achieved that, you will be provided in a provisional registration, all right? And that is after completing your MCQ and your clinical. If you've only completed your MCQs and you are offered a job, say you've applied to a hospital and you're offered a job, then you're eligible for limited registration. And I'll show you the pathways in a bit, okay? So that's where limited and provisional registrations come into place. So what is a standard pathway? So like I said, we have three pathways, which is the standard pathway, the competent pathway, and the specialist pathway, okay? Now, Standard pathway is where majority of you guys are going to fall into, especially if you guys are candidates that are still doing your MBBS or have just recently completed your MBBS and starting to um, wanting to do your postgraduate or your fellowships. All right. So standard pathway is very straightforward. You do your AMC MCQ and then you do the clinical. That's your part two. Now, say that you've done the AMC MCQ, but you don't want to give the clinical exam. You have the option of doing a work based assessment. Work-based assessment, I have a breakdown of what a work-based assessment is, but it is basically you have to get a job in a specific hospital, and they're usually rural areas. You have to get a job there, and then you have to apply and show your expression of interest that you would like to enroll in the work-based assessment program. Once you've done that, AMC has to accept you for the program, and you do a one-year rotation um, to go through each of the steps and assessments for you to get a general registration. We'll talk about that in a bit. Competent pathway are only applicable for countries such as New Zealand, Canada, UK, US, and Ireland. Now, guys, just to make sure for US, um, for, for US, you have to have done your medical degree in US. 
For UK, however, they have recently changed their rules where they said that you can, once you, if you're an IMG, you've completed your PLAB and you've done one year rotation, complete all the requirements, and you've gotten your final registration, then you can come to the competent pathway to Australia. Okay. Um, Canada and New Zealand, again, they have their own specification. So it's not a blanket rule that you have registered there, you can come here. So like, for example, US does not allow, if you're from US, you're not still eligible to come here. You have to go to the standard pathway or the specialist pathway. Specialist pathway are basically um, graduates who have done a specialist uh, position and uh, basically you've done a degree that is considered a speciality and you've completed the full studies of it and you have worked also as a consultant in that department for two plus years. Once that is done, you have to apply for this position, uh, for this pathway and this type of registration. And we'll talk about that in a bit. There's two types of that. What, one is the specialist recognition, one is the area of need. So specialist recognition is basically saying, hey, I've worked as a specialist for two plus years. I am a specialist in this field of interest. Can you please recognize my further studies? They can or they can deny it or they can accept it. So there is no, and it depends on how short staffed you are. There has been scenario where they have accepted, um, I know a couple of my own friends and colleagues and professors that have come through that pathway where they have done six months of supervised um, uh, job in that position, in that particular speciality, and then they have been asked to take the AMC exams. But once you've crossed the AMC exams, you will be given the specialist recognition and you are eligible to apply for the fellowship program here in Australia. As for area of need is where there's a shortage and you get a job in that area, okay? And then you have to apply for the fellowship again, okay? We'll talk about that a bit later. So this is the flow chart of the standard pathway and the registration. So as you can see, you must, you must recognize your college with the AMC and uh, the World Director of Medical Schools. And then once that's all done, you are gonna see if you further intend to take further studies in Australia for short term or a long term. If you're party, planning to stay here, settle here in Australia, then you have two path, three pathways, which is a standard, competent, and the specialist pathway. The other one is you have the short-term training specialty pathway, where you come here, train for one and a half, one to one and a half years, and then you go back to your home country, or you can apply for the specialist pathway where you have the area of need or the specialist recognition. All right. So again, um, as you can see, they're all blue. You, if you if you want to know more about them, the link to this page is at the end of the presentation. You just have to click on that, and they tell you more about the eligibility. Okay. So we're going to talk more about the standard pathway now. So standard pathway, you have two exams, which is the AMC NCQ, which you mainly have two books, which is the handbook for the NCQ book and the annotated multiple choice question book. For these. Apart from these books, you have also the John Murtaugh textbook, which is used for uh, revision. Okay, we're and then apart from that, once you've clear, completed or cleared your AMC MCQ, now guys, one of the most common questions are, is there a limit in the number of times I can take the MCQs? No. Is there an expiry on the MCQs? No. Once you've done it, once you've passed it and you're no longer taking, that is, it is, there is no expiry date on the result of the AMC MCQ. So if you plan to take your clinical way later, it, the MCQ scores still are effective. Then apart from that, here after AMC MCQ, you got you have two choices: either you do the clinical exam and go for the provisional, the general registration, or you go for the work-based assessment. Okay. So as you can see, this is like a small flowchart of how it works. So clinical exam, you secure an employment and you get, so the other thing is that once you've click, completed your NCQ and you say you secured a job in a hospital in an area of need and you are going for work-based assessment, you'll be initially offered a registration called the limited registration. We'll talk about that in a minute. So limited registration is only valid for one year and you have to keep renewing it and you have a maximum, you can maximum, you can renew them three times maximum. Once you've done the three times, you'll have to restart the entire process. All right. So limited registration is very useful for work-based assessment. So for clinical exam, you have one main book that the AMC provides, which is the AMC Handbook of Clinical Assessments. And apart from that, it's all about recalls. 
Now, what, let's talk about a bit about limited registration as a lot of you guys want to know about workplace assessment. So after the MCQ, you're eligible for the limited registration. It renews every year and you can renew it up to three years. Once that's done, you have to start the whole process as to why you're renewing and why you haven't completed a work-based assessment or why you haven't completed the clinical exam. So if it's not for the limited registration, you have four sectors that you can apply for and you can secure a job in. But out of these, you have two main ones, which is the area of need and the postgraduate training or supervised practice that most of you guys would be eligible in and most favorable for you guys. All right. And I hope I'm not confusing you, a lot of you guys. I'm trying to repeat it so that it kind of stays in. So I'm going to go into a bit of detail about the area of need of postgraduate, but not much about the public interest or the teaching of research, as teaching and research is not clinical. And public interest is only, they only give you a registration for four weeks, maximum eight weeks. All right. So, um, and apart from that, in the area of need is one of the areas where it'll be a rural setting. I know a lot of you guys have practiced as general practitioners, have practiced as doctors in other countries, out in the remote areas, not in a particular speciality. What you can do is uh, get your years um, equalized and say, hey, I have done three years. Can I please work in an area of need hospital or a GP setting and get the limited registration? Okay, so that's another thing. Now, if you want to work in a GP setting, you must pass an exam called PESCI exam. It is very clinical, very similar to your clinical exam. So if you want to work as a general practitioner or known as family medicine in US, you have to pass the PESCI exam. Okay. Now, moving on, postgraduate training or supervised practice is where a lot of you guys are going to fall. So say you guys have gotten your limited, um, secured a job in one of the metro area hospitals and they granted you a limited registration because we're short of staff, which is very favorable. Um, what you can do is with the limited registration, study for your clinical exam and you pass the AMC clinical exam and so you convert your limited to provisional registration. Okay, so that is how you get your limited registration for most of you guys. So moving on, um, now you guys just note to self that if you guys get do get into the working based assessment, um, you know, uh, work based assessment uh, roles, and you get that granted, note uh, please make a note that once from limited you go straight to general registration. So the provisional registration is completely skipped. That's what that means. Okay. All right, so what's provisional registration? It's very straightforward. It is basically you've completed your MCQ, you've completed your clinical, and the hospital has decided to give you a job. You basically, the hospital applies for a provisional registration on your behalf. And basically, it's a one-year rotation. You do it in three main departments, and you have to satisfy this criteria to get your general, reg general registration. So that is, you have to work a minimum of 47 weeks full-time. Annual leave is not counted. So a lot of you guys take uh, have found, have a lot of my students or a lot of uh, past candidates have found themselves in a bit of a grind where they have taken annual leave for five weeks or sick leaves in between or a lot of leaves in between and find out that they don't complete 47 weeks and therefore they fall short and have to do a bit more. So make sure that you can do a minimum of 40 cent full-time service uh, rotations, eight weeks in emergency medicine, 10 weeks in general medicine, 10 weeks in surgery. It can be any sort of surgery, upper GI, neurosurgery, um, you know, uh, just general surgery, orthopedics, your choice, obs and gynae as well. Then rest of the term is a term of your choice or the hospital's choice. And usually it'll be a leave relief term. And make sure you complete. So once you've satisfied this criteria, you are automatically eligible for registration and you just have to apply. Um, and you get a form or you get a notification saying, please submit a letter from the hospital saying you have completed these um, rotations and you submit that and you get your general registration. What is general registration? General registration is the ultimate goal for any candidates who wants to practice in Australia. Why? Because this allows you to take further training. Any training you want to go into, general practice, um, basic physicians, um, you want to be, uh, you know, surgeons, anything, pediatricians, you have to get your general registration. And that is one of the eligibility criteria. So right now I'm in the emergency medicine fellowship. I need my general registration to enter the fellowship. All right. So this is either done after AMC MCQ clinical examination on one year rotation or MCQ examination of work based assessment. And I hope this is very clear to everyone because 
this is, uh, I know a lot of you guys had a question about this part of the, um, regarding the registrations, okay? So moving on, what is work-based assessment? I know what, there's a question about what work-based assessment is in the Q&A and I hope this answers your question. So first and foremost, are you, uh, are you working as a practicing doctor here in an AMC accredited hospital? So there are, I'm gonna show you a couple of hospitals that the AMC accredits as a work-based assessment hospitals, which are rural hospitals. Perth has, WA basically has two hospitals. The Eastern states have a lot. And in Queensland has their own program called the Queensland Campaign, which a lot, takes a lot of the IMGs for the work-based assessment. Okay, it is quite tough to get in. So what that means is basically you first secure a job there. Once you've secured a job on limited registration, you, you would like to say, you contact the WBA officer and say, hey, I'm interested in the WBA. Now, a lot of the hospice, hospitals recently have said that you need to work a minimum of six to 12 months, depending on the state, to be eligible for the work-based assessment. Okay, that is the new catch that they have introduced. So the entire work-based assessment rotation can go up to two years, all right? So it's not just one year. So apart from that, I'm sorry, apart from that, once, say, you've done the mandatory whatever clause that they put in your contract, you've expressed your interest, you are nominated by your hospital to AMC saying, hey, we have a candidate for work-based assessment because the hospitals do get funding for this. Once AMC confirms your eligibility, AMC will send you a notification saying if you have been successful or not. Once that's been done, you do the entire work-based assessment program. The first six months is internal assessments, second six months is external assessments, and then you have these term assessments in between that you have to go through, okay? Once you've completed your assessments uh, uh, fully, you will be able to receive your AMC certificate, and this would be your general registration. And remember, there is a fee of $1,000 when you do get accepted into the uh, program that you have to pay to say, hey, I would like to accept this program. OK, I hope this is very clear. You cannot apply to any hospital for a work-based assessment. It has to be an accredited hospital. OK, so examples are, so in the WA country, you can see there is Bunbury, Geralds, and Kalgoorlie. There's, sorry, there's three. Um, in, the, um, in the Central Coast, you have about three again. There's a couple more in Queensland. And there's a huge list. So I have given the link below, click on it, see if there's any hospitals that work for you if you wanna do the work-based assessment, okay? And as you can see, there's one more there, that's a huge list. So as you can see, um, it is, there are hospitals that provide this, but again, you have to realize you are competing with other IMGs, so, and it is not necessarily the shortest course. Specialization, so, you can have multiple specializations, but as you can see, all arrows point to your general registration. If you don't have general registration, you cannot get into fellowship. So there are some fellowships that are very dependent on your residency status as well. So for example, your general practice, you have to be a permanent resident or a citizen. As for a BPT, which is your pediatric medicine and your adult medicine, you don't need a PR anymore. So that's another... Don't worry, that's not saying that you have to have it. They have taken it out, but that does vary. So two years ago, that was a mandatory thing. Now they've taken it out. So as you can see, general practice, the overall training is about three years. You will have to rotate in the, in the hospital for one year for general practice. Surgery, you have to pass an initial exam called a SET exam. And then you have a basic training and advanced training. You have to be a PR and a citizen for that. Then you have emergency medicine. Again, you have, um, it's a total of six years. You can finish it in 12 years. Again, citizen of PR. And you must have at least done one year or six, sorry, six months in ED, only ED to get into this fellowship. And last but not least, adult medicine. There are other ones such as radio, radiology, dermatology that are completely separate. And they're not, some of them are conducted state-wise intake. There are a couple of them such as urology, like dermatology and things that are national intake, such as anesthesia as well, okay? Now, apart from surgery, who requires a set exams to enter the fellowship, ICU, um, critical care also has an initial exam you have to pass in order to get in, okay? So salaries, 
I guess this is somewhat something that everyone would be interested in, how much you're going to get paid. So an average junior medical officer, when you start off, and again, guys, by state-wise, it varies, and you are going to be taxed. All these numbers are pre-tax. So uh, as a junior medical officer, which is called PGY 1 and 2, you'll be, ta you'll be paid about 70 to 85 uh, per annum. Then you have, as you can see, WA is the highest, and um, after that, it's TASI and then... New Zealand, Queens, uh, New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria are all pretty similar. Now, a top level consultant, uh, I do have a breakdown. So, you, the usually surgeons, they can hurt, earn about half a mil per year. Um, but again, remember the taxation is based on how much you earn as well. So, uh, and tax claims, but that's completely a different thing. And you'll learn about it when you when you completely migrate to Australia. Then, apart from that, GPs, general practitioners, they vary based on the billings. And again, specialists, it depends are you working in a, a private sector or a public sector, and specialists can work in a private and public. There's no restrictions for that. And GPs are always private, all right? Over time, now these numbers that you see are only, those are your base rates. So you will be added onto this, your weekend rates, if you're working a uh, Saturday is 1.5 times your base rate two times your base rate for your Sunday and public holidays and any overtime you work and if your consultant says, hey, yeah, you worked extra hours, I'm willing to uh, sign your paper so you get paid extra money, okay? So you do get add-on bonuses on this, all right? So this is again an average salary. So consultant, as you can see, it varies. Um, and as you can see, this is what a neurosurgeon makes and uh, senior versus a junior. Um, and yeah, it's just a breakdown of how uh, physicians and practitioners earn. So, any the so questions? The common questions that I've come across, um, and we'll look at the Q and A in a bit, and I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. Um, is why do people fail the MCQ exam? Well, a lot of you guys follow the American guidelines, such as Up to Date and um, the American Family Physicians on in online. So that's not the protocol that we follow, and that is mainly the reason. Um, and also a lot of us follow the practice that we follow in a home country, which is like we're more clinically oriented rather than investigations. So that does impede us a little bit. And last but not least, you have to be familiar with your recalls. And if you're not, 80% of your questions are recalls. Why do people fail a clinical exam? Well, sorry, before I go to that, MCQ pass rate is about 45 to 50%, by the way. So I think it's a good thing for everyone to know that. So that's favorable in your, that's very favorable. And why do you why do people fail the clinical exams? Well, people fail the clinical exam because communication is a big thing. You must, there are stations where you have to counsel patients on when they have cancer and you're breaking bad news. And English is something that's very important. You have to be fluent in organization. You can't be haphazard. They like you to take an organized history, do the examination, organized, and that's something that you evaluated on. Knowing your basics, um, it's very very important. I know a lot of guys who have done their further training, it is it gets a bit hard to come back to your basics, but basics are key. And then familiarity with the Australian guidelines and management. Again. Are the exams tough? Yes and no. So I've passed all my exams in my first attempt and a lot of candidates do as well. It's basically how much time you can dedicate to study and how much time you are willing to put in to just focus um, and other, I guess, how you spared is the important part. Is there a limit to the number of times you can sit the AMC, MCQ in the clinical exam? No. And even if you pass, you can sit it again if you'd like. Difference between the AMC and the opera. Well, AMC is like an independent national board that oversees all medical education and training, while opera is a regulatory board and they have another 14 other disciplines such as physiotherapy, chiropractor, um, psychologist, everything under them as well. And what happens if I have a gap in practice? So gap in practice is when you have more than two years of not practicing. Well, one, you have to show that you have been studying. So clinical courses are a good way to show that, hey, I've got a certificate from this course that tells me that I wasn't just sitting at home. So that's one. Another one is if you're doing a non-clinical role in a medical field. So say even being a receptionist at a GP practice is considered a non-clinical in a health field. So you can contest that. 
Um, depending on the number of years you have gap in practice, you return to your country, um, country where you've got your registration or you hold your registration, and then you have to complete at least a full term of four weeks, which is what total of 152 hours or 12 weeks over three consecutive registration period. That's over three years. So if you do either of them, you bridge the gap in practice. Can uh, clinical exams be taken in our home country? No, we're um, most likely going back to face-to-face -to -face as more uh, exam, they do prefer that. But there are, but clinical exams are done online as well. As you can see, there is a slight increase. You have to pay up to $400 levy additional if you want an online exam. Um, but face-to-face -face are usually held in Melbourne. So where else in Australia, uh, where else is Australian registration recognized? Well, you can work in Ireland, New Zealand, UAE, and India as well. And a lot of new candidates that want to go settle in New Zealand and um, want to take the New Zealand exam, your part one of the new uh, exam is done either the PLAB part one or the AMC part one for you to sit for the New Zealand part two exam. Okay. And you can also work in other countries such as Canada, Hong Kong, Singapore, but there are limitations. So please check in if you are going to those countries with your Australian registration. Should people apply for internship? Uh, uh, well, candidates who have not completed the internship in their home country or candidates that have done their degree in a foreign medical college and has not done the internship. Ideally, it is best to do an intern position because you are competing with Australian candidate graduates that have internship mandatory in the medical program that will be given the first choice for. And then if there's additional positions, then you will be given choice. All right. So internship, yes, ideally if you can get internship out of the way, it is the best way because there's a bit more competition. You're not just competing with other IMGs, you're competing with Australian grads. Okay. And you have to do it only out. You can only do it after the clinical exam. You cannot do it prior to that. So you cannot work with a limited registration if you have not completed your internship. OK. What are some of the IMG friendly specialties? Well, it's a tricky question, um, but some of the common ones a lot of IMGs go into because there's not a lot of barriers and not a lot of competitions and there are more seats for our GP, emergency medicine, basic physicians training and PEDS. Unfortunately, I and ICU is also quite friendly. Um, anesthesia, cardiology, um, urology, dermatology, ophthalmology and radiology are quite competitive. I'm not saying it's not possible, definitely possible if you're willing to put your hard work into it. So you'll need another master's degree in public health or other hospital, anything of your choice. And you also most likely need a PhD because that is what the Australian grads here that you're competing with will be doing. Does MD or MS count to a special, uh, specialist pathway or recognized in Australia and New Zealand? Ideally, no, but you can contest it saying that I've worked two years in my position as a consultant after my training, you can try applying for the specialist pathway. But again, you might be asked to take the AMC exams. But ND and MS generally are not recognized. Does MRC as MRCP count? No, either. So again, you can contest it by saying I've worked as a specialist, not just studied, worked as a specialist with two plus years for you to contest it. Can I know a bit more about specialist pathway? Well, yes, you may. So you have two sections. You have the specialist recognition, which is you apply directly to be assessed as a specialist. And basically you're required to take an, uh, you're required to undertake a period of supervised practice, usually about a year, six months to a year. And um, yeah, then basically they see your work ethic and they see everything and they have term assessments and then they see if they can recognize, recognize you as a specialist and enter you into the fellowship program. Um, sometimes they might ask you to take the AMC exams at this point. Um, otherwise, you can also apply for the area of need, which is basically determined by the relevant state. It varies from state to state. Um, and it does not necessarily re lead to specialist registration. You might be asked to, um, again, go for the specialist recognition application again. All right. All right. So this is just a bit of a flow chart. All the doctors who've asked questions on CV portfolio, you have your answers. Now, there are many questions on the pathway on the speciality, for which I think we will take it up a little later. Now, for the same reason, we know that many doctors are looking for these services, where not just for training for the AMC part one and part two, 
many doctors because we do our us uk as well so we see this apart from training there some sometimes you get lost because you are sitting here you don't know what's happening over there so you want someone who's already there who's already there in the system who successfully got the spot to guide you to mentor you and to handhold you so that's why we are here and uh, so the, now i think many doctors were asking what go campus is going to offer so now as i mentioned we do have amc consulting like let's say now if you all get back to us saying that yes you are interested in going forward with australia pathway we will sit with you we will confirm your slot with the australian physician where the doctor will talk to you will guide you and will tell you what is expected in your journey so you are well prepared you know what steps you need to take as you move forward so the first thing is that you would be having your amc consulting session then we do have coaching for your amc mcq that is your part 1 exam then we do have personalized training program for your amc clinical it's live online classes uh, where mostly it is headed by dr bala and her team so i'm sure you'll be really taken care now this is for your coaching segment now apart from this as many doctors are asking i am aiming at this specialty i am aiming at that specialty what is the pathway so you do have expert mentorship which is specialty specific based on what specialty you are looking forward to we will try and see if we can connect you with the uh doctor who's already in the specialty or who's aiming at the specialty who will be able to guide you and tell you what steps you need to take right to make sure you increase your chances of matching to a particular branch so that's your mentorship now we understand you've done with your exams but again the whole lot of questions will come how do i have to register for the jobs where do i have to register what is expected out of me in the interview i think this is this is the most stressful part studying for the exams and passing is another segment now this is again another segment so here we help you with cv building where we sit one on one and help you what has to be put what doesn't have to be put and what achievements you have how these achievements can be shown on the cv how your personal statement has to be written so we help you with your cv building plus the team of australian physicians will talk to you on the selection criteria the job application process plus we will help you in preparing for the interviews we what are the most frequent questions asked in the interview how you should present yourself in the interview and you know based on the specialty that you are aiming at what are the skill sets required so all this briefing and preparation sessions will be done and of course as most of you have understood by now uh, unlike uk because i know many of you are aiming at uk as well who are attending the session now when it comes to uk segment your ielts oet is the primary most requirement only after you pass that you'll be able to go forward with your exams but in australia that's not the case you don't require immediate english exams this comes at the later part when you're applying for your registration so we also train you for your ielts oet pt luckily australia has got many options unlike us or uk it is not just oet i mean us mle is only oet uk is ielts and oet australia is even more wider we have many options i'm sure we can work it out now after this again the headache comes visa documentation paperwork am i doing the papers right will my visa get approved not approved your accommodation the logistic support in australia that is when you go to melbourne for your amc part 2 apart from that as you going to a new country i'm sure you will have a lot of doubts on uh, you know the taxation the loan process the insurance process or the lifestyle over there so we do have a separate session to brief you all to get comfortable with the australian system over here and apart from this we will also help you guide you in terms of how to apply for observerships or how to get observerships in australia so that covers the whole package so starting from your coaching your logistics documentation mentorship cv writing your registrations that is ecfmg epic process so we handle end to end for you so you focus only on your um, studies that is you preparing for the exams doing it in the first attempt and going forward to now many doctors did ask about the portfolio now we do have an exclusive package which is called as portfolio plus now for australia we are not stressing a lot on portfolio or cv and neither we made it as a part of the uh, integrated package because as doctor said 
for Australia, the primary focus is pass the exams first because the exams are really, really tough. And then later on, you can focus on building your CV. But of course, if you have more time now, you can start with it. But whereas UK or US, we stress on portfolio and CV the day they join us. We do have a complete six month exclusive research course done by US physicians, followed with publication support. We have exclusive clinical audit and QIP program where doctors, lead qualifying doctor, NABH lead quality assessors are going to train you all on how to do audit, how to choose the topics, how it has to be executed, what kind of evidences have to be maintained, how the forms have to be done. Every single detail is given to you. Apart from that, we also collaborate with many conference bodies where we'll help you with your oral presentation, e-poster presentation. Now we are also running ALS course in Bangalore, which is approved by European Research Council, which is also recognized in Australia. So we've started the training program today where doctors from NHS have come in and this is going to go for a week long. In just two to three days, all the seats were full. So then our next batch is in the month of March. So if you are looking for portfolio, if you are looking for CV building, we are there. So nothing to worry apart from your coaching, mentorship, all your other activities plus CV building, we can work together. So this is all about our services for the Australian Australia Standard Pathway Consulting Program. If you wish to talk more about it and you want to know more about the services, package, costing. OK, I'm sorry, I think I had a couple of questions where they're asked on approximately what is the expense that they may come across, doctor. So I think we can say the whole services, AMC part one, part two, the English coaching, your uh, all the support activities, which I just mentioned now, approximately it might come somewhere around 6.5 to 7 lakh rupees. Along with that, I think Dr. Balan has showed very beautifully, I think every single expense was mentioned over there. How much is it for your part one exam? How much is it for your part two exam? And what is the AMC registration fee? So you have to add those expenses to this fees. So even if I put everything together, approximately based on how much you want to invest and are you passing the exam in the first attempt and how many resources do you want to use for uh, your exams and all that, somewhere between 10 to 12 lakh rupees is a decent amount, I guess. That may be the kind of expense that you may come across. Right, doctor? Or is there any correction here? 10 well, to 12 lakh rupees may be a kind of average spend. Yes, and I know it seems a lot, but trust me, once you've crossed the entire path, as you can see, a base salary for mm -hmm. junior medical officers is quite good. Um, and I think a lot of the uh, graduates, I mean, who are, all the doctors have registered also would vouch for that. Um, yeah, but that's, a, that's, that's about right. It, I do agree that it is slightly more expensive than UK, but it depends on what sort of lifestyle you're looking for.